Hello everybody, my name is Jay and today we're going to be taking a look and benchmarking the free gaming PC. So if you didn't watch the previous video about this, you probably should because it explains a lot of the background behind this. Um, so basically what I did is I chose a bunch of parts that were either free or I got them extra with stuff that I purchased. So for example, I purchased like a box of parts. Um, I got, I made those parts and went instead of those parts into a computer, sold it and made all my money back. So everything else was just extra kind of thrown in there, uh, free stuff. Um, obviously a majority of this is just stuff that was dug out of the trash or things like that um, from a wide different range of places. As I said, check that video out for a lot of the background story on how I got these parts, how you can get these parts, etc. Uh, so what I'm mainly going to be focusing on today is rather I'm going to be benchmarking this and talking you guys through a little bit of the background story um, because there was a lot of different things after the last video we did. It kind of left off and we had to do a little bit more of some different stuff. Um, so we basically had to go through and do a couple steps to, in order to get something that was playable um, and I want to get there and talk about that before we show off some of the benchmarking um, and things like that. So if you're unfamiliar, this system has about three and a half or probably about three gigs of RAM. Um, it has a GT880 um, and it's, or 8800, sorry, that was my bad. But majority of this stuff um, is really old hardware. It, probably the date that it came out was around 2005. Everything here, maybe the power supply, power supply is actually probably pretty new. Um, but majority of everything here was around the date of 2005 was this when this computer just released. And around 2005 was right around the time where core started to increase a little bit, performance started to increase a little bit. So unlike a computer that's a couple years old now, um, this computer would have been a couple after a couple years been obsolete as well. So this is really, really, really obsolete stuff. Um, so why I would really recommend instead of doing uh, you know free PC build, do something with like a budget of thirty bucks, like I did my thirty dollar gaming PC, and that thing plays all these current games quite well. Um, so I definitely recommend checking that video out as well if you really want to see something for thirty bucks that's really playable as well. And that took me a year to get, but it is a yard sale PC, and I did know what I was doing, and it does play amazing. Uh, for the price. So this PC right here, let's talk a little bit about what we had to do to get this working. So first off, number one, we had a big problem with the fact that um, this computer does not run Windows. Um, it, of course, the processor, um, right around the time that it was happening, we probably would have gotten Windows XP would have been the best bet um, for a supported operating system. Um, I loaded Windows 10 on there and Windows 10 just did not like it at all. It did not support it at all. Um, it just would not, I wouldn't even be able to d install it. It just completely blew screen and that was it. Um, and then the other thing is um, I went and tried Windows 7. That also blew screen, didn't like that as well. So I had to fall back to a version of Ubuntu, which is a form of Linux, if you're unfamiliar with that. Um, and I got a desktop version of that. Now, obviously this is supposed to be a gaming computer, um, but about the only thing you can really play on this is probably Minecraft, which I did test and still had struggling issues with. Um, so that's why I really would recommend if you're really interested in getting something that's a playable gaming computer, check out that $30 PC video because the difference between something you got for free and 30 bucks is quite significant, um, which I actually have it sitting down here at the moment. So basically I went through and I installed Linux um, or Ubuntu and I went through and did that. It's on the 32-bit version. Then I went through and I installed Minecraft and then I tried you know, playing a little bit of games. And if you turn down the settings, you can get about 50 to 60 FPS if everything is turned down all the way. Um, if you want to start making things look pretty, you get about 15 FPS, which now you're going, well, that's kind of not really playable. Uh, well, think about it this way. For hardware that's almost, I don't know, we're almost probably a couple of 12 or so years old, let me think, I gotta do math. Yeah, 12 or so, 13 or so years, which with those pretty quick math. Um, it's pretty playable, um, especially when the fact that, you know, it, it's you know, that old. Um, so the other things I wanna talk about real quick is just some of the background story in the sense that um, the optimization I did in the background. So uh, the reason why I chose uh, Ubuntu afterwards, um, after I realized Windows wouldn't work, is because if I realized Windows wasn't supporting it, I knew the hardware power was not going to be that great. This has two cores, uh, I think of like 512 megabytes of video memory, and you know, 3 gigs of RAM. Obviously not anything that's going to play, even Fortnite. Fortnite will struggle in this, I didn't even try. So you've got that su such tight hardware restrictions, so Windows takes about a gig and a half 
of just memory uh, when you just have an idle desktop. It's, uh, and that's if you don't have bloatware on there. So Windows takes a good chunk of memory already, about half the memory I'd have, and if we wanted to load up Minecraft or any other tabs in the background, that would not work on Windows. So Ubuntu has a really nice, uh, is really appealing in the sense when you have a low budget um, is simply because it uses less uh, the, the hardware um, when you just have a desktop idling. Um, it uses less of the uh, resources so you actually get a little bit more efficient. Ubuntu is famous for that. Obviously this is what the professional servers run on. Um, some form either that or CentOS. Um, but they run on some basic form of Linux and obviously Linux is very appealing because it's very useful with its resources. A lot of the uh, charities that do give away computers run a form of Linux. Um, a lot of the you know a lot of the stuff that really doesn't have strong hardware power is usually used um, for a um, or Linux is usually put on that system. So I'm going to get into just showing you guys some of the benchmarks. I loaded up Minecraft on here. Obviously, Minecraft was a specific choice because it's really a high indicator. Um, a lot of hardware nowadays is um, well, since Minecraft is really a high uh, clock speed process or high clock speed game, uh, and usually single or double core. Uh, really, what determines the speed and FPS of Minecraft is the solely the um, processor. Now obviously if you want to throw like uh, shaders in there and stuff, just get more complicated. Also I'm going to be running an unmodded version of Minecraft. I'll throw some mods in there in a, a little bit and uh, get the Optifine and stuff on there and then you guys can see what the more optimized version of Minecraft looks like. Um, but I did show Minecraft just because it's one of the few games that I can guarantee that any computer can play. It supports Linux. It's, it's just a lot of it's quite easy for me to test. Now, obviously, Fortnite, I'm not going to try. PUBG or any of the, you know, recent popular games are just going to be not playable. And I, I know that. Um, you just, is this hardware is just not powerful enough. So if you really want to see something that plays this game, is amazing. As I said, a $30 gaming PC. But let's get into testing and benchmarking this system. So first off, and I apologize for, this no for the noise. This computer is actually pretty loud. I'm loading up Minecraft. Um, and I just actually clicked uh, play, and you know, obviously this is what Ubuntu, if you're unfamiliar with, actually looks like. It's actually a pretty classy looking operating system, and sadly, uh, Microsoft, um, a lot of games don't actually support it because it's really good for gaming in the sense that it optimizes your resources really well. Um, but if most games don't support it, which most don't, um, then you really end up in this tight situation where you can only play really a few games. Um, and so it does look kind of classy, and it's a good alternative if you don't want to pay $100 um, and you want an open source, really secure operating system, which is a nice perk of this. Um, <clears throat> as for people that, you know, really want to do like server stuff, this is a great option as well. Um, but for Minecraft, uh, especially since the hardware on this is so bad, um, we're just going to wait a bit. As you can see, this is going to take a long time. And right now I'm running Minecraft default. I'm not, I have Optifine. I don't have any of those like basic uh, frame or any of the basic stuff on there, the basic mods. Um, so we're going to put this in full screen. I've already done the work of loading up a world. Um, so I've already done loading up a world. If you guys want to see, actually we'll just start um, by loading up, going into that world that we've already got so we're not doing any of the loading of the frames. We're just loading into a previously created world. Then we'll do a thermal benchmark it with you know, starting a new world up because um, that will give you a good estimate. And then I'll go back into this world that we've loaded and then you guys can see what happens when we have Optifine because loading is not really going to be affected too much by Optifine. Optifine is more loading uh, in-game once you already have a world created. Um, so this is heavily going to rely on um, right now. Just going to right now loading and creating the world is going to rely on CPU, um, which actually we're just joining the world. So that's how long it took to join a world. Um, so as you can see, I've already turned down most of the settings already, and you can, we're not getting too fr many frames. But just give it a sec to load into the world, um, and then we can optimize it a little bit. Um, so I've also cut down. I had the chunks on minimum, everything on fast. Uh, I'll actually turn on vsync, hopefully that maybe that will do. And let's do minimal particles as well. And uh, that's about um, as most optimized as possible we can get. And uh, as you can see, that is not too uh, many frames whatsoever. We're getting maybe uh, two FPS, three FPS, which is not something you want to do, especially on a uh, crap computer. So let's load up into some Optifine now and uh, we can go through and do that as well. So it appears Optifine is also going to be, have to be limited on its playability because it looks like we can't add more than a couple gigs of RAM in there. So it's, uh, it's, there's only three gigs on the system, I believe. I don't know if there's system information in here. System settings, maybe? No, I don't want to go in there. I already cleared this off, so I don't have any really dangerous issues. But let's just see if we can 
wait for Minecraft to load. And I also wanted to show you guys why it takes so long to load. Um, especially, you know, everyone wanted to see what a free PC looks like, and this is pretty much what you'd expect for a free PC. It really does suck. And, you know, for 30 bucks, you can get something with a bunch of used parts, like an i5, and actually have something quite playable. Um, that's why I recommend, you know, watching that video. Um, the $30 game piece I did, like, benchmarking, testing, everything. Um, and it actually was really, really fun. Um, so th this, on the other hand, we're just basically going through and kind of seeing what it looks like when you have no budget whatsoever um actually probably you probably could sell this a little bit too and make some money off of it but this is mostly what trash looks like if you all want to know what it was in a pc form um yeah this is just just waiting now um yeah the case doesn't support usb 3.0 um it's got an interesting set of things okay so let's just see if we can get back into a regular world and i'm going to start by starting off real small um, hopefully that will make it a little, a little bit faster. We can get into the game a little quicker. Um, I'll go through and optimize some of the Optifine settings from the last time I remember playing. I think I know how to do that. It's been a bit. And so right off the bat, I do notice that we've got a little bit faster loading. So um, that may be partly due to the Optifine, I would assume so. Um, but still, really the default Minecraft should not have any difficulty running. And uh, as you may assume, it's just... Uh, not the most highest quality gameplay we'll have. And as you can see, we're already having some issues. So I'm going to give it a little bit to load in. Uh, I'm going to go through my settings. Um, so let's see, performance. Uh, smooth FPS, fast render, um, fast math. Um, done, let's see, details. Fast, clouds, fast. Um, okay, so there we go. We've got, actually got something semi-playable, and that's at almost 50 FPS. Okay, let's put that up. And so now we've got about a little bit of FPS. So that's actually relatively playable. Um, I wouldn't say it's the most playable thing ever, because we're still getting some lag spikes when we're loading in a game, uh, loading in chunks. But, I mean, I would hate to tell somebody this is what you should be playing Minecraft as, because um, it's definitely not. So let's just, I think this is creative. Um, yeah, it's it's really got a lot of lag spikes, which is probably because based off the CPU, I would assume, being so uh, horrible. Um, actually, I'd be willing to bet it's on the CPU. Um, so let's get the lag meter on. I'll just show the FPS in the top corner as well. And so basically what this is going to do, let's see if we can, I'm going to do the dangerous thing and actually going to turn up the frame rate to, or the render distance which actually may help a little bit because it's going to um, load in the chunks rather than um, me loading them in right all the time. Um, so as you can assume, it just gets really laggy, like really, really laggy. Um, it does play a little bit. We've got some stuff. I'm going to turn that back down again. Um, but it's really just difficult to play. Like as you can see, it's not that... Uh, I, would, I don't know. This is really something I would say if you're really desperate you really want to play Minecraft. Um, I would recommend playing on your phone or something because it will give a better experience than this. Uh, actually, your phone probably has better hardware as well um, than this does, um, if you guys are curious. Um, but of course, if you really want to play the PC version and get some mods on there and stuff, then, I mean, we've got, I mean, some, I mean, you can definitely build, uh, I would say, oh, whoa, that was a very weird. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely, pl like, playable if you wanted to do a little bit. Um, I mean, it's just, I don't know if I would consider this, um, I don't know. It's very difficult to play. Um, so if you're really interested in seeing what a benchmark with, you know, doing everything you possibly can with all your settings set to low and you barely can play Minecraft, uh, that should really give you an accurate, you know, representation of how bad this computer really is. Um, so... Uh, that's going to wrap it up. I'm just going to get out of here and uh, we'll get um, the wrap-up video just talk about kind of what we go over. Um, but as you see, uh, Ubuntu is actually pretty nice. Um, don't don't confuse that why this computer is running bad. I specifically chose it because the computer was going to be bad and uh, to get Ubuntu on there. Um, but that's going to wrap it up. Uh, let's just see if I can. We'll go back in and uh, shut this down and uh, we'll get uh, into the review. So the question to really ask is, was this PC something I would consider getting? Um, well, 
But really you're gonna pay for in here because not really anything is free. Yes, you don't have to pay money, um, but you do have to have a little bit of the ability, A, to go out and go to places um, like drive or have somebody that's willing to take you to some of these places to go looking for these parts. It takes luck to get some of this stuff for free. Um, I mean, yes, a lot of the stuff is thrown away every year. There's a lot of places that do throw it away, um, but the places that are near me are not going to be the same places that are near everyone that's watching. I think of people all over the world that watch these videos. So my recommendation is if you really want to do one of these PCs, first off, um, a budget of above um, like 30 to 50 bucks is, if you just have 50 bucks, you can get something that's much more playable than this, like a thousand times more playable than this. And if you really want to go for the free route, um, you just want a PC to just do some schoolwork or something like that, this would be something that I would say is a really good PC for that. What you're going to pay for this in other ways, though, is by your electricity. Um, also, you have to do all the time and research, uh, finding these places, looking every day, um, and going on yard sale hunts or doing all this extra stuff. So you're going to pay for in time. So if you rather just got a job, saved up 50, 60 bucks, and did that same thing, you would actually get a lot more performance and actually get a gaming PC that's playable and actually quite fun to use. Um, so I think that in, in kind of review, this PC um, is just really a good example of you get what you pay for. Obviously, this is going to suck up electricity like crazy. Um, it's going to be very difficult to do anything other than do schoolwork, really. And uh, it's just not going to be something that is going to be an enjoyable experience for everybody else. So I want to recommend you watch out, check out those videos where I do uh, the $30 gaming PC, $75 gaming PC. Um, they're all really good videos talking about the hardware that goes in behind picking up parts at such a low budget. But th that hardware is substantially more powerful than this. And I also want to just make sure and thank you guys for watching this video because this is an interesting video to see. Really, what do you get when you pay for? Or what do you, you get what you pay for and really what is that? And um, I mean, I learned, I hope you guys learned something too. Um, I, I really wouldn't recommend getting this PC. It's not worth it. In electricity, it sucks up. Um, so I'd recommend saving up a couple bucks. I know 50 bucks is a lot when you're younger um, because then that's the majority of what these kids want to play. When, um, but 50 bucks and you do your research, you can get something that's very enjoyable, uh, much more enjoyable than this. So I just want to say thank you very much for taking a little bit of your time out today to watch this video. If you're interested, please subscribe for the other tech videos, small budget computer builds that I do, or the main really nice expensive builds also for tech news, hardware news, things like that, and reviews, leaks, etc. Um, but thank you very much for watching. Give the video a like if you enjoyed, and uh, goodbye.